mag ni malakulet Isbalangkir ni matateer Kuyul ako kachawet Kung kakmuloy, smug kakmuk Hakag at lem, halirisim Kok tikit yaka kakamuli Harikate, kocha baka suya Kawa suya ka na o Shinkin kao ka, matwete mari Shinakas ba, rugi ni isim Di kong kinak, awa jala Di macho ka isim, apo Isim isok, isim teer Pasi kaya lasya, si kato Bihari ko, suku cha kawet Hanel kukumat, satu shani Isim ule Welcome everyone to the seventh Mother Tongue Film Festival. Thank you for joining us for today's discussion. Uh, live real-time captioning and American Sign Language interpretation are available during today's live program. To view the captions, please use the link provided in the comments section. If you're viewing this program after the live broadcast, please note that it will also be made available on our website with closed captioning. My name is Tom Vick. I'm curator of film at the Smithsonian's National Museum of Asian Art. Before I continue, I want to acknowledge with respect uh, to the Piscataway people on whose traditional territory the Smithsonian and indeed my own home stands and whose relationship with the land west of the Chesapeake Bay continues today. Founded in 2016, the Mother Tongue Film Festival opens annually on the United Nations International Mother Languages Day, which is February 21st. The festival is an effort uh, of Recovering Voices, a Smithsonian initiative involving the National Museum of Natural History, the Center for Folklife and Cultural Heritage, the National Museum of the American Indian, and the Asian Pacific American Center. If you are new to the festival, I encourage you to check out mothertongue.si.edu uh, to find out about the featured films and upcoming events. Your feedback is also welcome on this festival's social media channels. Uh, we are grateful to our Smithsonian and non-Smithsonian partners for their support, all of which are listed on our website, and extend our thanks to our sponsors and our partners for this event, and I hope you'll check out the other films we are presenting as part of the National Museum of Asian Arts Film Program, which can be found at our website, which is asia.si.edu slash films. Today, I welcome you to the roundtable discussion about the film I Had a Dream in Turkish Bir Riyal Gurdum. Uh, this program is presented as part of the 2022 Mother Tongue Film Festival. Our theme this year is from the Olelo Hawaii proverb, Ikawa Mamua, Ikawa Mahope, which means through the past is the future, uh, which evokes an awareness that our ancestors provide us with a foundation for the futures we create. Understanding our past and connecting with the words of our ancestors is foremost in this film, I Had a Dream. We will be taking your comments and questions in the live chat below, so please feel free to participate. But now I'd like to welcome our guests. Borchu Assange is the director of I Had a Dream. Umut Atim J is the film's producer, and she will also help with translation. Uh, they are both joining us from Istanbul, Turkey. And finally, Mary Lin, curator of language and virtual uh, cultural vitality at the Smithsonian Center for Folklife and Cultural Heritage, joining us from Silver Spring, Maryland. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank Hello. You. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, so this film is the story of Borchu's grandfather, who was the last known speaker of the Ubuk language. Uh, so we thought it'd be appropriate to have a linguist here, an expert in the field, uh, to lead the discussion uh, with Borchu about the uh, Ubuk language's complex structure and its really fascinating history. Uh, so with that, I would like to turn things over to Mary Lynn. Mary, over to you. Thank you, Tom. And we'll see you back during the question and answer session as well. Um, yes, my name is Mary Lynn, and as a linguist, I've worked with speakers and learners of indigenous and minoritized languages since the early 1990s. Um, my work has primarily been taken place in Oklahoma in the United States, but also now in Tibetan areas of China and sometimes in Europe as well. 
um, many of the people that I've worked with um, were also the last fluent first language speakers of their languages or one of the last. Um, and so I have a special feeling for um, Virgie's grandfather. I've known many wonderful uh, fluent speakers slash linguists themselves that I have worked with um, over the years. I've also worked with younger people who are learning their languages many times from the documentation that has been left behind by their grandparents or their ancestors further back in time. Um, so um, this entails something, this, this, this conversation is really close to my heart. It's, it, um, it expresses the, um, what a lot of people that I know and love work with every day. So um, I've also worked with archiving languages um, and there's a group of people that really run um, wonderful archives on endangered and minoritized languages now. So hopefully we'll have a little bit of time to talk about uh, your interaction with archives and um, as well. So I'm really happy to have Burju Asanje here to discuss her journey and the process that she had in self-discovery um, uh, through her grandfather's work and through um, the, his tireless process in documenting uh, their um, Ubech, uh, Ubukcha language, or I'm getting this right, Ubukcha and or book language. Yes. Okay. So. Um, I'm going to give Virgie a chance to introdu introduce herself. Um, as Tom said, um, she uh, will introduce herself in English, but um, she understands English very well. But after that, she may feel more comfortable expressing herself in Turkish. And so Umut will do translation for her. So uh, Virgie. Hi, everyone. I'm Virgie. Uh, I started as a journalist, uh, and I have done so many TV programs and documentaries at Turkish national channel. Uh, for the last three years, I have been producer for an art program on this channel. At the same time, I'm an independent documentary director. That's good. Is that it? Okay, Umut, would you like to introduce yourself? I think uh, I have to continue introducing her just a little I bit. I think so too. <laughs> she has, there's so much more about her. <laughs> yes, much more than that. She's oh. very modest. Uh, she's an award-winning director uh, and she's really uh, famous for her documentary films, especially in Turkey. She has done this uh, really great uh, films like Sadek, which is called uh, Faithful in Turkish, uh, English. And then she did this Birya uh, Gördüm, I Had a Dream, which is a privilege uh, to share with you. And it's an honor uh, for us to be a part of this festival. Uh, my name is Umut. I'm uh, the co-producer uh, for this project, and I'm here to support Burcu. Uh, I'm based in Istanbul. I also started as a journalist. I did so many TV programs, uh, theater plays, and then uh, I continue with the films. Uh, and uh, besides the fiction films, I also do documentary films and I work together with Burcu uh, on a new project. Maybe we will talk about it later uh, at the end. Uh, but uh, this has been such a great journey uh, to be a part of this project too. So the, the film, thank you both of you. Um, the film is so beautifully, Beautifully done. We're going to show a real quick clip, um, kind of a teaser for the film for anybody who's joining us who may not um, have seen the film yet. So um, we want to cue up that. Okay. So what you're hearing in there is Burji's grandfather speaking uh, Ubukcha. 
And it's a language that people aren't going to hear in everyday speech. Um, so it's really powerful to have his words and to be able to hear it. Um, I think the my first question for you is, is actually pretty um, intimate in many ways, but I was wondering if you can share with people um, how it feels to live without knowing your mother tongue and without being able to hear it. Of course, uh, I try to tell you. Um, I became a mother, and I wanted to give. I wanted to give my son a name in my mother tongue, but no one didn't remember any words from my mother tongue. Uh, it looked like a nightmare. My grandfather Tefik died in 1992. He was the last speaker of my language, Ubu language. I went a journey in the footsteps of my grandfather. To be an uh, exile child is very difficult. And I understood what does it mean when uh, I'm making this documentary. Uh, because you feel yourself not belonging anywhere. Uh, this is the other important point to lose your mother tongue. Çocuklarınıza söyleyecek şarkılarınız olmuyor. You no longer have songs to sing to your kids in your own language. Benim çocukluğum şöyle geçti. Dedem min dünya üzerinde ubuh dilini konuşan son insan olduğunu biliyordum ve de yakın bir dede torunu ilişkimiz vardı. Ama bunun ne anlama geldiğini bilmiyordum elbette. Let me tell you a little bit about my childhood. I knew that my grandfather was the last person to speak Ubuk language, but and we had a pretty close relationship, but I couldn't understand what it really meant back then. Turkey, uh, there's a little village in Turkey. Uh, its name is Hacı Osman. Uh, my grandfather lived there. And uh, on the summers, I heard some words from my uh, mother tongue because uh, we worked with uh, linguistics from all over the world. Ne olduğunu anlayamadım kelimeler. Aslında benim hayatımın hikayesiymiş. Keşke o zaman anlasaymışım onları korumak gerektiğini. I wish I could understood those words back then. The words that I didn't understand. Ubuhlar Kafkasya'da yaşayan bir halk. 1864 büyük Çerkes sürgünüyle Osmanlı topraklarına sürünmüşler. Tavsiye eder misin? Ubuhlar, Ubuh people, Kafkasya'da yaşayan bir halk. They were living in part of Caucasia. And in 1864, the Great Turkish Civil War. In 1864, they were exiled because of the Circassian. Aslında şu anda buna benzer bir şey dünyada yaşanıyor. Çünkü Ruslarla uzun yıllar süren savaşlar sonrasında. Ee, o yüzden biraz Ukrayna meselesine sanki e, çok daha iyi anlayabildiğimi düşünüyorum. Actually something similar is going on in the world uh, at the moment because of this uh, long wars with the Russia and people were exiled and right now she empathizes with uh, Ukraine and Russian conflict and the war uh, much more better because it's a very similar situation that people has to migrate because of this war situation back then. Uh, Ubuh ile 82 sessiz, 3 sesli harfe sahip uh, birçok dil bilimci tarafından dünyanın en zengin dili olarak tanımlanan bir dil. Ubuh is a very rich language with uh, 82 silent and 3 vowels. So it's been known as one of the richest languages in the world by the linguistics. E, sürgün şöyle gerçekleşiyor. E, Soçi bizim ana vatanımız şimdiki Soçi. 
Uh, Sochi was the motherland for them, and this is uh, how the exile has happened. Uh, atalarım, atalarım bir, e, bir kötü bir gemiye bindiriliyorlar. Tabii bir kez olmuyor mu? Defalarca gerçekleşiyor. E, yolda çocukları ölüyor. Uzun ve kötü bir yolculuk. My ancestors went on a journey by the ships, and it, this was a very long and very um, bad journey to say and uh, their kids died on the way. Ailelerden insanlar ölüyor ama onları denize atmak zorunda kalıyorlar. People from the families they had they they died and they had to throw this body dead bodies to the water. Ve 1864 yılında da eee Ottoman Empire'da bir Türkiye'de bir takım yerlere yerleştiriyor diyorlar. And in 1864 uh, they were uh, they were put and uh, in some of the regions by the Ottoman Empire in Turkey mm-hmm. at the first time of course o zamanlar elbette ana dillerini çok güzel konuşuyorlar of course at the beginning they were able to speak their own language they had their own language and it was very easy for them to communicate in their own language uh, ama aradan uzun yıllar geçtikçe hem Türkiye'deki durum siyasal durum yüzünden but of course uh, after some time passes um, because of you know the things uh, depending on the political situations uh, in this land and what else uh, başka ana, ana dillerini kaybediyorlar ana so, dillerini yavaş yavaş konuşmaktan vazgeçiyorlar they eventually give up speaking their own language ama e, ana dillerini konuşmaktan vazgeçiyorlar. 1900 ama elbette benim köyümdeki herkes çok güzel Uğurça konuşuyor ilk başta. Bunu söyledik zaten. 1960 yılında Türkiye'ye bir e, dil bilimci geliyor. George Dumezi. In 1960 there was a linguistic uh, came to Turkey. George Dumezi. He was a historian also we know. Ve o dil bilimci dedemi buluyor. Onlar karşılaşıyorlar 1959'larda, 50'lerin sonunda. Ve e, ikisinin bir ömür boyu sürecek bir savaş başlıyor. Bir dili kurtarma savaşı. And then he meets with Burcu's grandfather, Tevfik Esenç. Mm-hmm. And they start this uh, fight together uh, in order to keep this language alive. And they started to work together. Benim dedem Uğurçayı çok iyi biliyor çünkü onu da büyük dedesi Papuş büyütmüş. O Kafkasya'dan gelen bir Papuş Kafkasya'daki konuşulan Uğurça gibi konuşmuş dedem. His grandfather knew this language very well because he was raised by her, uh, his uh, grandfather, her grand grandfather named Papuş, <gülüyor> who spoke the language perfectly. Because he was from the motherland in Caucasia. Yeah. Uh, benim dedemle uh, George Tupesil benim dedemi seçiyor çünkü o yıllarda gramere ha- hakim olan bütün gramere hakim olan son insan dedem. George Tupesil uh, specially picked Tevfik Esenç because he knew the grammar very well during those years. He was the only one who was. Uh, very well knowledge about the grammar and the language. Bu elbette zor bir yolculuk ve savaş. Dedem o yıllarda İstanbul'da yaşıyor. Eee George Dumezil bazen Türkiye'ye geliyor, bazen dedem e, Fransa'ya gidiyor. Bu arada dedem tabii ki tek kelime Fransızca bilmiyor. Of course this was a very long journey and this was a very hard one. And at that moment uh, Tevfik Esenç, her grandfather was living in Istanbul and sometimes He traveled to France and sometimes George de Mazil uh, came to Turkey. So they continued this work. Hatta um, George de Mazil'i ben e, çocukluğumda bizim Fransa'dan gelen bir akrabamız olduğunu düşünürdüm. Ölmüştü ve öyle anlatılırdı. Benim bir akrabam olduğunu düşünürdüm George de Mazil'i. When she was a kid, when Burcu was a kid, she was thinking George de Mazil as a relative. <laughs> <gülüyor> Because uh, a relative lives in France who was visiting them. Ee, ardından George Dumezil'le dedem 
Fransızca ubuhça bir sözlüğe çalışıyorlar ve George Duvazil ölüyor. And then they started to work on a, a dictionary, a French and U-book, Ubuhcha. And then Dumezil died, unfortunately. Ama bu arada e, Norveçli çok ünlü bir dil, dil bilimci Hans Vogt da e, dedemle birlikte çalışıyor. Hatta dedemi anlayabilmek için Türkçe öğreniyor ve dedemi Norveç'e davet ediyor. And then, fortunately, another interested in uh, famous, worldwide famous uh, linguistic Hans Walk from Norway, Norway is interested in uh, taking French and in this language, and they start to work together. Bu uh, 1960'lar, 1970'ler uh, bir biçimde bu insanlar dedemi buluyorlar. Ve bu arada Türkiye'de benim ana dilimi korumak için hiçbir şey yapılmıyor. Kimse farkında değil. Of course, uh, during these times in 1960s and 70s, uh, these people for somehow find uh, font uh, Tevfik Esenç. Uh, but uh, at that moment nobody understood the value of the language, the value of public language in Turkey. And nobody was interested in it, but... This uh, Hans Walk from Norway and Dumezil from France were interested in the language. Dedem, this is very interesting, so that's why yeah. we had to make this point. Dedem 1993'te hayata gözlerini yumduğunda ben 15 yaşındaydım. When Tevfik Esenç died, Burcu was 15 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, ölümünden önceki son haftada Dumezil'in öğrencisi olan Josh Sheresiste ile aynı masada çalışıyordu. Sheresiste, Josh Sheresiste. Okay, just before a week that he died, he was working together with George Sheresiste uh, at the same table. Uh, ve şöyle anlat, bir uh, büyük bir mutluluk çığlığı geldi ikisinden. And she just heard a ha- scream of happiness from both. Çünkü dedem bir ayın Mont'un adını hatırlamıştı. It was back then Tevfik Esen remembered the name of a month. <gülüyor> <gülüyor> Just one word. Sometimes it's really like that. You know, you, older people will think and think and think and then they will remember a word. Um, and it's, yeah. <gülüyor> yeah. And then they were both screaming with happiness. Çünkü <gülüyor> dünyaya <gülüyor> Anı, ubuhça bir e, ay adı daha kazınmış oldu. Because another word uh, in ubuhça, in Yubuk language, uh, given to the world. Yep. Dedem öldüğünde, yani o dedemin son günlerinde trajedi şuydu ki, e, dedem ana dilinde sayı son sözlerini söyledi. The tragedy was... In his last days before he died, before Tevfik Esenç died, he was repeating words in his own language. Mm-hmm. Çocukları ve torunları ne söylediğini anlamadı. Belki bizlere e, çok önemli şeyler söylüyordu. Belki onun ardından yapmamızı istediklerinden söz ediyordu ama anlamadık. Maybe he was saying very important things. Maybe he was saying the things to do after He lives this world, but neither her, his kids nor the grandchildren understood him. Belgesele gelince, işte tüm bu uh, ortam içinde büyüdüğüm için sanırım um, ben belgeselci olmaya karar verdim. And maybe just because I grew up in this thing, in this, uh, I don't know what to say, but uh, I decided to be a filmmaker. A documentary filmmaker. Yeah. Ve ikinci bağımsız belgeselimde belgeselimin de nedeni e, de, e, belgeselim için istediğim şey dedemin izlerinin peşinden koşmaktı. And for my second documentary feature, uh, my reason uh, to make this to make this film was to follow the footsteps of my grandfather. Bu sadece dedemle dedemi hem dedemi daha iyi tanımak istiyordum hem de e, oldu mu? 
Yok, şeyi bulmak istiyordum. Identity, kimliğimi ve beni bulmak istiyordum. Hmm. This was not only because uh, I wanted to know my grandfather uh, much better, but I also wanted to find my own identity, myself. Ve yönetmen, diğer yönetmen arkadaşım Cantekin Cantez ile birlikte biz bir yolculuğa çıktık. And we went on a journey with my co-director Cantekin Cantez. Yeah, I think we have a picture of him too, right? Yes. We want to say hi. He couldn't be here with us today, um, but he's also uh, the power behind this film. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. They are great duo together. Yolculuğumuzun ilk kısmı Hacı Osman köyüydü. Çünkü dedem. Aslında ilk göç ettiğimiz yer, sürgün edildiğimiz yer olan Hacı Osman'da öldü. The first part. Okay. <gülüyor> The first part in our journey was in Hacı Osman village because my grandfather died in Hacı Osman village in Turkey. Sürgün edildiğimiz köyde orası. That was the village that they were exiled. Uh, exiled from Caucasia and came to this village. Of course, there was no one left speaking Yubuk language in this village. Okay, this was also interesting because I'm sorry, I think we hear some voices at my point. Can you hear as well? Okay, now it's better. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, I haven't, uh, back then, I haven't gone to my uh, village for the last 20 years. So this was pretty interesting for me going back there after 20 years. Eee Cantekin'le birlikte dedemin mektuplarını bulduk dedemin evinde. We found the letters from my grandfather in his home. Ve o mektuplar da aslında coştumaz ile dedemin mektuplaşmalarını bulduk. These were the letters that were exchanged between George Dumezil and Tevfik Esenç. They found it together with Jantekin and Burcu. Uh, aynı zamanda da uh, bir akrabamız uh, Meral Çare adını burada söylemek isterim. Dedemle birlikte o buhçayı korumak için çalış, gönüllü olarak çalışmaya çalışmıştı. Mm-hmm. At the same time, uh, ona yardım aldık mı? Aldık olsun. I got help from uh, Meral Çare, who is also one of our relatives and who work together, and I would like to pronounce her name here, I would like to thank her, uh, who worked together with my grandfather uh, to help this language alive. Ve e, önce çok uzun süre masa başında araştırmalar yaptık. Dedemin nereye gittiğine dair. Çünkü gazete haberleri vardı, mektuplar vardı ve isimler vardı ve kurumlar vardı. Uh, at the beginning we had lots of uh, research on what uh, and where uh, my grandfather uh, went and what ha- he has done in the past so we had to make like a map uh, of his journey şunun da altını çizmek isterim ki e, başta 4 kişilik çok küçük bir belgesel ekibiydik at the beginning, we were only four of us. We were a very small team of people, which included you, you and Jan Tekin, Jan Tekin, Jan Tez, and, and your Tekin. brother, my brother, Burak Esenç, and the DOP, uh, Levent Ahi. So we also would like to underline uh, this part, and we would like to mention their names. Bunu söylüyorum çünkü uh, filmi tekrar izlediğimde. Bazen bunu dört kişi yapmış olduğumuza inanamıyorum. I keep saying this because sometimes when I watch this movie I cannot believe that 
uh, only this like small group of people have done quite well. Ve dedemin e, bize yardım ettiğini düşünüyorum ben. Bu filmin çekilmesini istediğini ve bize yardım ettiğini düşünüyorum. Çünkü birçok imkansızlığı başardık. I also believe that my grandfather helped us in a way because we have uh, gone a quite uh, important way and uh, we um, were able to um, fight with so many difficulties during our journey. Uh, Hacı Osman'dan sonra Paris'e gittik. Mm-hmm. Uh, i̇lk durağımız uh, Sorbonne'da. So after Hacı Osman village we went to Paris and uh, our first uh, stop after Hacı Osman village was uh, Paris Sorbonne and the Sorbonne University. Eee uh, Paris'te çok ilginç bir şeyle karşılaştım ki oradaki dil bilimciler beni büyük bir heyecanla karşıladılar. It was very interesting because uh, all the linguistics uh, there they Just welcomed me with great excitement. Herkes dedemin adını ve herkes dedemi çok iyi hatırlıyordu. Bu arada da arşivleriyle ilgili arşivleri de kayıp dedemin bana yardım etmeye çalışıyordu. They all remembered my grandfather's name very well and they wanted to help me to go through the archives. E, hatta Türkiye'nin en ünlülerinden biri olduğuna inanan bir dil bilimciyle tanıştım. And, uh, Dedem, yok bunu söylemeyelim, bir şey söyleyeyim. <gülüyor> Dedemin bir gırtlak filmine ulaştım, Inalko'da. Yok Inalko'da değil, Bu, söylemeyelim adını. Dedemin bir gırtlak filmini buldum. Then she has reached the archives uh, of her grandfather. Uh, We saw with the uh, Rodkin, the film. Yeah, the X-ray of of him uh, yeah. doing the, some of the double articulations. Yes. I think we saw it at the beginning of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Birçok insanla röportaj yaptık. Birçok dedemi tanıyan insanla röportaj yaptık. Örneğin o Rodkin filminin çekildiği anda olan bütün dil bilimciler, mühendisler de aynı salonda bana. Dedemi ve dilimi anlattılar. We interviewed with so many people. Uh, for example, uh, the people who knew about this X-rays. Uh-huh. Uh, Geçmişteki. And then they told about uh, her grandfather to Burcu. And they, told, they all talk about Tevfik Esenç and they knew him back then. Birçok insanla röportaj yaptım, yaptık ve dedemle ilgili çok çok Bilmediğim bir sürü şeye ulaştım. Dedem Fransa'da e, bir dil bilimci gibi yaşamıştı. Uh, I reached so many interesting facts. Uh, like my grandfather uh, lived like a linguistic uh, in France. Yeah. Hatta, hatta e, kolejde Fransa'da ders vermişti. Ubuhçayı anlatmıştı. He even gave lessons, uh, language lessons at Collège de France. Yep. And talking about new book language. Right. I, I think linguists that work with people like your grandfather completely recognize um, their expertise, not just in the language, but about their language as well. And many of them are considered, uh, you know, community linguists today or linguists proper you know so um i think that it's not surprising given given how how long he worked on the language and how fast they could work on the language with him he was clearly thinking not just um not just in his language but about his language all the time as well so a true linguist i think <laughs> this is also because maybe he was a good teacher he was very well respected because it's not easy to teach even though you know some language, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Yeah, just because you're a speaker does not make you a teacher of the language. Of course. So. But, the fact that uh, he could, yeah, it was really good. The fact that he could was amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Burcu figured it out. When she learned about this, she was also amazed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, 
e, neredeyiz Paris'teyiz. George tabii ki ben dedemi çok iyi tanımıyordum. E, çünkü bu, bu da Kafkas, e, Çerkez, Çerkezlerin hayatı bir takım kurallarla yaşandığı için e, büyükler kendilerini çok anlatmazlar. Okay, um, we have some rules uh, as being uh, Circassian. Yeah. We have some rules. Uh, we don't like to talk uh, about ourselves. Büyükler, <gülüyor> Büyükler evet. Dedem de o yüzden kendini anlatıyor. Especially the older people in our own culture, they don't like to talk about themselves. That's why I didn't know about my grandfather very well. Right. And then I started to learn more about him. Hı hı. Evet, benim Paris'e giden bir dedem vardı ama Paris'te de dedesi İstanbul'a giden bir torun vardı. Josh Lumezil'in torunu. Umut gözükmüyor musun? Uh, okay, I had a grandfather uh, who went to France, but also there was another uh, grandchild in Paris whose grandfather traveled to Istanbul. <gülüyor> And Burcu met eventually. She met the grand uh, child of George de Mazel. Yeah. Biz bulur. Kind uh, of, uh, kind of like cousins from yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like that. <laughs> Çünkü bu iki Promete bir dil kaybı olmasın diye savaşmışlardı. Uh, Promete ve de uh, çok heyecanlı bir buluşmaydı. Bana. Uh, dedesinin arşivlerini açtı. Hiç açılmayan arşivler. This was a very exciting meeting for both of us because these great people uh, fought together uh, hand in hand in order to save this language mm -hmm. and uh, Dumezil's grandchild opened the archives yep. for Burcu. Yep. Bu arşivler yıllarca açılmamıştı. Uh, Kolej de France'da Kırmızı bir kutunun içinde dedemin mektuplarını ve başka kelimeleri buldum. In a red box in Collège de France, I found the letters of my grandfather. Mm -hmm. Ve de Ubuhça çalışmalarını buldum ikisinde. And some works in Ubuk language, uh, which belong to both of uh, Dumesil and Tevfik Esenç. Kayıp arşivin bir kısmını da buldum diyebilirim. Çok küçük bir kısmı da olsa. She also found some of the lost archive. Mm -hmm. Ve Kolejde Fransa'daki o kırmızı kutunun içinde çok ilginç bir şey buldum. Tamam. Önce bunu söyledim. Ha, peki. Ee, dedem Dumesil'e bir mektup yazmıştı. Orada annemle babamın nikah davetiyesini buldum. And uh, filmde bu var. Okay. I think this is a very emotional moment uh, back then and right now she gets also emotional because she found this letter in this red box uh, which was uh, talking about uh, her own uh, mother and father getting married. Mm -hmm. uh, Tevfik Esenç was talking about how his son is getting married to her mother to Dumezil. Yeah. Paris'ten sonra e, Hans Vogt'un izlerinin, e, dedemin izlerinin peşinden Hans Vogt'u aramak için Norveç'e gittik. And after Paris, uh, we went to Norway uh, in the footsteps, uh, footsteps of my grandfather to find Hans Vogt. Mm -hmm. Çünkü Hans Vogt da dedemle çok uzun süre uğurca kaybolmasın diye çalışmıştı. E, Norveç National Library'de Kocaman bir arşiv getirdiler bize. In Norwegian National Library, they brought us a huge archive of works that belongs to uh, Hans Vogt and my grandfather. Ve Norveç National Library'de dedemin ses kayıtlarını, daha önce hiç olmayan ses kayıtlarını buldum. And uh, I found uh, the voice recordings that belongs to my grandfather which we didn't even know. Yeah. Norveç'te çok ilginç başka bir şey daha oldu. Dedem geldiği tarihte gazet Norveç'in önemli üç gazetesinin manşetinden manşetine girmişti. <gülüyor> That another interesting thing happened which was shared in our screens earlier that Tevfik Esenç 
was in the headlines in the most important uh, newspapers, three of them. He was in the headlines. He was in the news. Dedemin e, Hans Vogt'la birlikte çalıştığı dağ başında bir otelde röportajlar yaptık. Pardon, e, dağ başında bir otelde Hans Vogt'un oğlunu bulduk. Onunla röportaj yaptık. Okay, um, up in the mountains we found this hotel uh, where once uh, her uh, grandfather and uh, the son uh, and Hans Vogt worked together and uh, Burcu found the son of Hans Vogt and she interviewed with him at this time at the same hotel. It it just seems like um you know your grandparents just keep on giving to you right uh, uh, you know the quest um meeting you know cousin like siblings around the world that you're really connected with and in uh, you know that keep this going keep this work alive um i, I don't want to rush you too much but i i want to get you went to, actually back to your homeland um, in the Northwest Caucasus, something that your grandfather never got to do. What was it like to go back to your homeland um, mm -hmm. in this journey? Norveç'ten sonra, dedem ölmeden önce ana vatanını görmek çok istemiş ve bunu başarmış. Dedem ana vatanına gitmiş. I think you understood it uh, wrong because okay. he actually went there before oh, okay. he died. Okay, yeah. that's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. the part. Uh, but Çok just ileride. once. This mm -hmm. and he was pretty old when he went mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. He onun in peşinden, uh, of course, she followed the footsteps and went there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, dedem Kafkasya da. Kafkasya'da hala yaşayan Afazya'da ubuhlar var. Bu çok önemli. Kafkasya'da yaşayan ubuhlar hala var. Onları buldum. There are still people, ubuh people, ubuh people living in Kafkasya. Afazya'ya ilk olarak gittim. Çünkü dedem aslında Afazya'ya gitmek çok istemiş ama Kafkasya'da hastalandığı için başaramamış. Aslında onun istediği turu tamamladı. Okay, uh, he went to Kafkasya, Tevfik Esanç, but he couldn't make it to uh, Abazya. Mm -hmm. And because he was sick, uh, but this time Burcu continued the journey and she was able to reach where once Tevfik Esanç wanted to go. Abazya'da yaşadığımı kelimelerle anlatmam çok zor. It's hard for me to express uh, the things that I've been through in Abazia. Dedeme duyulan saygının ve vefanın ne kadar yüksek olduğunu da anlatmam çok zor. It's very hard for me to express this uh, with the words. Uh, they are, uh, the respect is bigger than the words uh, that uh, towards my grandfather in Abazia. Beni he was very much loved. And he's still very much loved. Çünkü onun çünkü Kafkas halkları için dedem bir kahraman. Çünkü ana dilini korumaya çalıştı. Ubuhcan'ın başına gelen onların da kahraman olduğu ana dilimizi korumaya çalıştı. He is like a hero in Abazia because he was fighting in Kafkasya because he was fighting for his own language. Yep. To save the language. Right. Yeah. Just. Yeah, he's a hero. <laughs> he's a hero. I yeah. love him. He's a yeah, hero. Yeah, he is. Um, at the, in in telling this story, you talked about you know where you started out and wanting to um, sing songs or name your child. When we think about losing a language, we often think about um, you know all the words that we lose or the grammatical structure or. Um, you know, important speeches or these kinds of things, but it's really the everyday language that's the hardest to get back. You know, um, how you talk to your children, you know, how you talk to your your husband, <laughs> you know, how, how you do these simple things. 
and especially with a language that has so many different consonant sounds, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, it, it's a huge inventory, I think, like, you know, <laughs> 87 mm -hmm. consonants, you know, um, it, it's really hard um, to, to get from no speakers to even getting a start to reclaiming the language to start and, um, you know, and hopefully someday down the road, maybe bringing it completely back with interested people and stuff. But you mentioned one time when um, you were, we were talking before we came on um, that your grandfather had a song that he taught your father so that he could actually try to uh, pronounce the sounds of Ubakcha better. Um, I think we'd like to play a little bit of that. You gave us permission to play this. This is a recording that you made, um, and it's um, of it's a still photograph of your father and your grandfather. We'd like to play that. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you want to say a little bit more about the about the song? Evet, babam e, bildiği uhçe kelimeleri e, tamamen unutmamak için e, ardı ardına getirmiş ve e, bu şarkıyı yapmış. Yıllar boyu da bu şarkıyı tekrar etti. This song was done by my father, whom we can see on the screen with uh, Tevfik Esenç. Uh, she, uh, he made the song uh, by putting the words in Yubu language together, and he made the, he just composed and made up the song in order uh, to remember his own language and not to forget it. Mm -hmm. And he was singing this for many years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can hear um, uh, some of the really back sounds. Um, I think that. Um, uh, Sarah, do you want to put up? I'm gonna. We're gonna get a little linguisticy for a second. The vowel or the consonant chart of the language. So people, this is from Wikipedia, um, and some of it may not be exactly what um, your grandfather's dialect was, but it gives you an idea of all the consonants in the language. Um, and your language is really known for. Um, the sounds that, um, so if you read the chart from the left where it says labial, those are your lips. And it really just goes all the way back into your uh, uvula, which is the thing that hangs down in the back of your throat, um, in, into the pharyngeal cavity. Um, and you can see um, it has a lot of sounds in that back part, the velar uvular uh, part of the, of the mouth. Lots of sounds. It's really known for that. And in that song, you could hear some of those being sung really well. Um, you know, and it's, it's, um, it's a great way of remembering and practicing sounds. Um, uh, a lot of people have fewer inhibitions of making sounds when they're singing. <laughs> Of course, but in the movie, when the viewers uh, watch the movie, they will hear it much better from Tefik Esenç, especially with the x-rays and the yeah. rest mm -hmm. recording that they found is like the voice yeah. recording for you. 
mentioned that they found in Norway. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They are all in the film, so <laughs> please watch it. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, and you can see on the on the chart. Um, there's lots of what look like, you know, a consonant like a K and a Q and things like that. But then there's little tiny things up above. These are diacritics and these are what are we call double articulations. And so a lot of times you would do two, one, something in the front and something in the back at the same time. And so it's, um, it's very uh, complicated in that way. Of course, um, it's not so complicated that you know, hundreds of thousands of people couldn't have spoken it over the years, right? I mean, it's definitely doable in that way. So thank you. Um, I don't want to get too geeky with you guys for the language, but but it is pretty, um, it has a remarkable sound system and plus of other things that are beautiful about it as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, can, shall we continue from uh, the journey that she was talking about? Sure, from sure. Oh, We're getting a little bit uh, closer on time, and I didn't—I oh. don't see any questions yet, so we can keep on going. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, bu arada, önce, um, babamın bu şarkısı benim için önemli çünkü babam bir Alzheimer hastalığı yaşadı. Ve dedemle, dedemin kaderini babam da bir kez daha gördü. Ee, unutmaya başlayınca ana dilinde bu şarkıyı söyledi tekrar. This is also very uh, important for me before going through this uh, journey uh, after Kafkasya. Um, because uh, especially with the song, um, Burcu went through the same trauma that she had with her, once she had with her grandfather. Uh, once again with her father because he got Alzheimer unfortunately and uh, after the first shock uh, he started to sing the song çünkü ana dil çok kolay bir kelime gibi gözüküyor değil mi because uh, the mother tongue uh, looks like a very uh, easy language and uh, uh, not easy word uh, i'm sorry you can say uh, uh, it's not easy. Uh, uh, yes, to say it's easy. I lost my mother tongue. Mm -hmm. But ana dilini kaybedince sadece ubuhlar değil, ben değil, dünya çok büyük bir şey kaybediyor. Mm -hmm. But when you lose your mother tongue, it's not only you people uh, or it's not only me, but the world loses. Mm -hmm. Loses big, big time. Yeah. Ve bu, bu kayıp benim hayatımda e, bu kayıbı unutamıyorum çünkü e, hayat anne olduğumda babam hastalandığında hayatla kurduğum tüm bağlarda karşıma çıkıyor. I cannot forget about this loss because uh, every time uh, with my connection with life when you know when I became a mother or you know uh, any other time uh, during my life. I always uh, meet with this loss. Mm -hmm. it, it always comes up some ways. Şimdi Kafkasya'ya geri dönmek istiyorum. Kafkas e, e, seyahatimizin belgeselimizdeki Kafkasya kısmına. E, Kafkasya'da evet akrabalarımı buldum. E, dedem çok güzel karşılandı. Norveç'te ve Paris'te bulduğum sesleri onlara götürdüm. In Kokesia uh, I found my relatives and it was uh, very nice because uh, I also uh, brought them uh, the voice recordings and the letters of my grandfather, so they were very happy. Beni Karadeniz'in diğer kıyısında kaybolan çocukları gibi kucakladılar. They welcomed me like their other child who was across. Uh, at the uh, right across the Black Sea, Black sea region, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, like the lost child. Mm -hmm. You are, you are. <laughs> Their children, a child as well. Yeah. Child, uh, who was in the uh, other side of the Black Sea region. Ana vatanımla buluştum günü unutmayacağım. Aslında dedemin neler hissettiğini hissedebildim. I would never forget the day that I met with my uh, motherland. 
because that was the moment I felt what my grandfather felt like. Mm-hmm. E, ailemin sürgün edildiği köyü buldum. Tabii ki artık orası bizim değil. Soçi'de bir köy, Vardan köyü. I found uh, the small village, Vardan village in Sochi, which was the village that my family exiled from. O topraklarda dolaştım, o ağaçlara dokundum. I touched those trees and I walked through that land. Ee, dedeme ubuhçayı öğreten papuj dedemi düşündüm. I thought about my grand grandfather papuj who taught ubuk language to my grandfather. Ee, evimizin kapısının kapandığı son gün, son anı düşündüm. I thought about the last time that the door of our home was closed. Mm-hmm. Halkımın e, vedalaşırken ana vatanıyla nasıl ubuhça neler söylediklerini düşündüm ve o sesleri duymaya çalıştım. I tried to hear the voices of my own uh, people uh, saying goodbye in their own language for the last time that they were living their homeland. Mm-hmm. Sonra Sochi'de sürgün edildiğimiz limana indim. And then I went to the harbor in Sochi where we were exiled from. Uh, exile is to sell exile is very easy. To I say can. exile is very easy. But I understood that in this harbor. What does it mean? Because uh, denize baktım. Ee, ne zor şartlarda sürgün edildiklerini hissettim. Because I looked at the sea and I understood what kind of harsh conditions they were going through when they were exiled. Mm-hmm. Bence bu bir soykırım ve büyük bir trajedi. I believe that this is a genocide and this is a huge tragedy. Ee, o genocide'ın sonunda da bir dil kayboldu. And then a language is lost after this genocide. Mm-hmm. Ama şunu da söylemek isterim ki dedemin bu büyük çabası benim dilim bir kaybolan bir dil değil artık. But I would like to say that because of the hard work that my grandfather has done my language is not a lost language. It's a Sleeping language, maybe. <gülüyor> sleeping language. It's a sleeping language. We would like to call it. Çünkü dedemden sonra elbette artık kimse konuşamayacak. Çünkü o sesi çıkarmak imkansız. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's not easy to make the sounds as also you described mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, Tevfik Esenç once did. You know, not maybe exactly the same way. Mm-hmm. Kimse konuşamayacak. Bunu biliyorum. Ama Hala üzerinde çalışan dil bilimciler var. Paris'te, Norveç'te, Kafkasya'da. But there are still people working on this. Linguists from all over the world. From Paris, from Norway, from... Uh, dünyanın birçok yerinde. From all over the world, you know, working on this. Benim erkek kardeşim ki kendisi belgeselimizin de researcher'ıdır. Uh, Burcu's um, brother, Burak Esenç, uh, he is also the researcher uh, for this documentary project. He has done a lot. Şöyle düşünüyor, şöyle der. Hayatta sıkıştığı zamanlarda. Acaba bu uçça ana kendi ana dilimde düşünseydim sorunları daha kolay çözebilir miydim? He always says whenever he's in trouble, whenever he's having a hard time in life, what if I think in the book language? Is it any easier? <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe, maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe that's what we'll never know, right? Until people start speaking the languages again. A language again is what we're missing. You know, what artistic, what thoughts, what creativity. Um, what ways of interpreting and understanding the world it, we don't have anymore. When you said it's a loss to the world, it is. It's not just the scientificness of the language. It's it's really the heart of the language. And the more hearts there are in the world, the better. Um, I really thank you for sharing all of this, your journey. 
it's, it's hard. It's hard to talk about this. It's so close. And, and it sounds like you found a lot of wonderful parts of yourself in, in this journey. And I really thank you for sharing it. We really need to wrap up, but I think there was one more, one last thing you wanted to say before Tom leads us out. Is that right, Virgil? I'm sorry. Başka son olarak eklemek istediğim bir şey var mı diyor. Şey, tamam bir şey söylemek istiyorum. Okay. Yani. Ee, biz bu yolculuğu bitirdik. Şimdi e, Umut daha sonra bizim e, projemize katıldı. Yapımcımız oldu. Uh, maybe I can say this from this <gülüyor> point of view. Uh, when they finished, I got involved at the last stage. After they finished this journey. Uh-huh. Aslında Umut'la daha önce tanıştaydık. Belgeselin için daha da güzel olabilirdi. Çünkü dört kişi bu kadar ülkeyi gezdik ve e, zordu gerçekten. E, şunu söylemek istiyorum. Şimdi biz yeni bir projenin üzerine çalışıyoruz Umut'la. Okay. Um, it could have been easy. She is giving me compliments. So I will skip this part. It could have been easier if we worked together from the beginning. Uh, but uh, right now we are working on a new project together. Uh, Baksa Museum, yani Türkiye'nin çok uh, uzak bir coğrafyasında kurulan bir çağdaş sanat müzesi ile ilgili çalışıyoruz. We are working uh, on a documentary film uh, about an art museum located in a very remote, one of the most remote regions in Turkey. Uh, and that's also changing lives of the people. And, uh, we, and we would like to say that uh, sometimes you don't have to leave where you are you you have an option so uh, this is also another uh, way of looking at immigration and uh, living what it means to live your motherland and uh, not belonging somewhere and uh, my because my fundamental problem i understood it clearly because i'm an exiled child to get to go and to stay and uh, thank you all of you i look Let's... forward to seeing your next films i'm <laughs> i'm i'm a i'm a devotee now şunu söylemek istiyorum dedemin ve üzgünüm biraz duygusal oluyorum ubu dilinin sesini bu festivalde duyurdukları için tevfik esencin adına da kendi adıma da sürgün edilen halkım adına da çok teşekkür ediyorum For the last words, we would like to thank everybody, and Burcu would like to thank uh, in the name of uh, her grandfather, Tevfik Esenç, and also the whole people who were exiled, uh, the Ubuk people, uh, for, you know, uh, sharing this uh, journey uh, of Ubuk language as a part of your film festival. Thank you. Exactly. And the last. I'm an angry child. I know what does it mean to lose and not belonging anywhere. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Well, well, thank you, uh, Borchu and Umut, for bringing your wonderful film and your knowledge to this conversation, and also to you, Mary, for bringing your expertise. Uh, it's been really fascinating. It could probably go on for another hour, but unfortunately, we do have to wrap up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd also like to thank the audience for participating, all of those who watched, listened, and commented, and also thank you to our CART and ASL providers who helped us uh, bring this event to you. Uh, please do follow the Mother Tongue Film Festival page on Facebook to get notifications about future events and find us also on YouTube. Visit our website and please come back here for our next program. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>